Hi everyone, and welcome to the first episode of the Sacramento Valley Garden Web Bay Society's new YouTube series. My name is Ben, and our plan for these videos is to bring you new content with some of our region's garden railroads, layouts under construction, tips and tricks, and videos from our events. Um, our plan is to release them as often as we can, ideally once a month, but we really will need your encouragement to keep that content coming. So um, please enjoy the video, and then subscribe, like, comment, and ask questions just to help us keep going with this. So without further ado, let's roll the video. Hi, this is Ben with the Sacramento Valley Garden Railway Society. I'm here today at the home of Ed Corngay and his incredible F-Scale Railroad. It's been featured by Garden Railways Magazine, the Sacramento Bee, KCRA, and others. It's really one that you don't want to miss. Let's go check it out. The theme of my railroad is historical sites in Northern California. Basically, it's, it's a, a modern day railroad using historic trains and cars that allow you to visit all of the historic sites within an hour drive of where I live here in Rockland, California. So this is a tourist railroad, let's keep that in mind, and we are visiting historical sites around this area. So the passengers would load here. I have a passenger platform here for the, for the passenger train. And the first stop on the trip is Roseville Station. At that point, the passengers can leave the train and go looking around in the area. There's an old steam engine house that they can visit. There's also a coaling station, a water tower, or they can climb the hill and visit the Amador Mine Complex. After the train departs Roseville Station, You'll be able to see out your windows the Rockland Quarry after the Big Gun Quarry. You'll see the foothills area of Loomis with farming. You'll also be able to see Sutter's Mill off to the right side of the train. After that, the train starts moving towards the Sierra section of the railroad.
was a 3% grade up into the top of the Sierras. The train will then go by the Empire Mine and the Truckee Lodge, as well as a stop for water at the top of the hill before heading back down into the valley. So I've, I've liked trains even when I was a kid, but never really had a nice layout. I tried even buying a layout at one point, but just buying someone else's layout, setting it up and watching it go around in circles for a couple hours didn't interest me. Visited a friend in Arizona. One of his neighbors had a garden railway, and that's kind of what got me hooked. It looked pretty simple. It just throw some track on the ground and the train goes around. Little did I know it was a lot more complicated and difficult than that. Likewise, I've worked for Hewlett Packard for over 30 years. I, my degrees in computer information systems, I started with them doing computer programming. What I currently do and I've been doing for the last 17 years is in the area of optics, purchasing optics for the internet for our internet products. Oh, cool. So my other interest is I founded a sports car racing club and we rent Sonoma Raceway, Laguna Seca, as well as Thunder Hill Raceway for our members so that they can take out their high performance cars in a safe environment where there's no tickets. And uh, my probably my number one hobby is my Cavalier King Charles Spaniels. <laughs>
So I had a couple of things I wanted to achieve with the railroad. Of course, I wanted the railroad to go over stream, to go over water. I wanted the railroad to have a tunnel. I wanted it to have trains that passed each other going head to head. The one thing I couldn't achieve in my original design was a train crossing over another train simply because of the grade challenges. throws challenges at you. I think right now my biggest challenge is my Sierra section is still settling and that causes me to have to rebuild some of the track. What I've done to make maintenance a little easier is just about all of my track is set in concrete. So the only part of my railroad not set in concrete is the wooden trestle sections. safekeeping. To run my trains, I don't have to take them off the track at all. All I when I want to run trains, get the power, back them onto the main line, and I'm out running. shop and I saw K27 with some of the uh, F-scale passenger cars and it just blew me away and at that point I basically sold all of my G-scale trains and started collecting F-scale. It's bigger. I mean, if you're into G-scale, it's probably because you like big trains, otherwise you can run Z-scale. But and the biggest trains are F-scale as far as the detail and everything like that. Though I have, once again, added one G-scale train back into my collection, so I guess I can't say I'm a purist. My trains are all battery powered, um, no electrical, I'm not interested in electrical, electrical seems like a big hassle. I would, heaven forbid, which with as complicated as my railroad is, to have a bad circuit somewhere that I have to track down.
lot of what I did at first was read Garden Railways magazine. There's a lot of good pointers and tips. But I think the, the one thing that's keeping me in the hobby is the people that I know. Because uh, there's no way I could build and maintain my railroad by myself. So you may get into the hobby because you like trains, but it's the relationships and the people that help you with your railroad that keep you in the hobby. All right, well that's the end of our first layout tour. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please again, subscribe, like, comment, ask questions. Let us know what you'd like to see in future videos. Until next time, thanks everyone.